believe and the joy that you bring for the victory that heaven is waiting for me this is the reason i sing oh oh, oh, oh. I will not be silent. Oh, I'll testify of your grace. Jesus forever, my song will be you, only for you. For the cross that you bore and the debt that you paid, for the victory you won over death and the grave this is the reason i sing for the hope that you give and the joy that you bring for the promise that heaven is waiting for me this is the reason i sing oh, 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 oh. So good, so good, you're so good to me. Forever I'll sing, you're so good to me. So good, so good, you're so good to me. Forever I'll sing, you're so good to me. For the cross that you bore and the debt that you paid, for the victory you won over death and the grave. This is the reason I sing, for the hope that you give and the joy that you bring for the promise that heaven is waiting for me this is the reason i sing for the cross that you bore and the debt that you paid for the promise that heaven is waiting for me this is the reason i sing for the hope that you give and the joy that you bring for the promise that heaven is waiting for me this is the reason i sing oh oh, oh, oh. jesus the reason i sing oh, 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 oh. This is the reason I sing. Good morning and every Sabbath church. We thank God of this wonderful opportunity that God gave us to worship Him in His Holy Sabbath. On behalf of Southern Asia Pacific Division, leadership, pastors, and church members, would like to extend our warm greetings to all of you in this church. We are here, me and Pastor Ian, attending the SPD Administrative Council, Administ Administrators Council, since last Wednesday till today. And this morning, all of us were distributed to several churches in the city of Brisbane. The Southern Asia Pacific Divisions was the daughter 
of the mother division, which is Australian division, before we separated into Far Eastern divisions and later become Southern Asia Pacific divisions. You see the map there, the territory. On the, on the east, you see there is a Papua New Guinea, the, the, the Papua Island on the western part of Papua. It started the territory of Southern Asia Pacific divisions, consists of 19 countries from Indonesia, which is neighbor with uh, Papua New Guinea. And there's a small island there, small country, Timor-Leste. And moved to the west, we have the Philippines, we have Malaysia, Brunei, Jerusalem, and then you see Singapore, Thailand on the north, and then Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, going west to Myanmar, and you continue going to the west, you will, he, you will meet Bangladesh, and south and the south, you see the small island of Sri Lanka, or the tip of India, and then we cross India until we reach Pakistan. That is the 19 countries in our territory of Southern Asia Pacific divisions. With the total populations of these 19 countries, more or less 1 billion and 100 million people. And out of this 1.1 billion people, 700, 700 million are Muslim. In Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, Jerusalem, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. And the rest, out of this uh, 1.1 uh, 1 billion, the other about almost 400, we say 300 million are Buddhist, more than 300 billions are, million are Buddhist, and the rest are uh, Christian and also the Hindu. Yeah. The Christians in our territory is more or less maybe about 150 million, something like that. Yeah. And about 200 to 300 are Buddhism, and the rest, about 700 million are Muslim. With more or less one, 1 million and 700 church members, Seventh-day Adventists, spreading around this territory. And the biggest number of our church members came from the Philippines, where Pastor Ian came from. And the second largest, there are about 1 million and 300 thousand church members in the Philippines and about 200,000 church members in Indonesia where I came from. So we are here to attend this meeting in SPD to share the visions that beside the SPD we you have a neighboring divisions with a big territory with the big challenges because of this uh, religious background, but there are also huge opportunity because we have to tell them about the good news of salvation. In our territory, if we quote what uh, Jesus said in Matthew 5.37, the fields are vast, the harvests are big, but the laborers are few. That's why in our visit, we invite the leaders, the workers from SPD to come to our territory. It is like the story of maybe Apostle Paul or Peter when there is a call from Macedonia. <laughs> come to Macedonia. <laughs> we need you here. <laughs> and with these uh, situations, that's why we are here. We thank God because SPD already sent their missionary to our territory. And I heard also from this, this particular church, you have your mission trip to Thailand. Some other territory, you come to Timor-Leste to help to construct the school there. And we are glad because you help us. 
we realize that we ourselves, we cannot finish God's work in our territory. With 1.7 million church members to, to evangelize 1.1 billion populations with those very challenging situations. But there are still some opportunities. Uh, one of the story, Pastor Ian already tell you a story, maybe one of the stories that I will share to you, just to make to, to shorten it, about how we can evangelize, evangelize our brothers, Muslim brothers. A, wa, a young man, his, wa, his mother was an Adventist, married to a devoted Muslim. When he was born, until about six years old before he went to school, the mother was allowed by the, by the husband to take her son to come to the church every Sabbath. But after the son was study, the father put him in the Muslim elementary school. And since that time, he never attend the church anymore. He grew up, finished his elementary, continue with his uh, secondary high school and in the senior high school, he found out that his father's faith was not strong enough, not good enough to convince his mother to become, to convert his mother to be a Muslim like that. So when he started his, uh, his, his uh, study in college, he thought something came to my mind. I have to find one to be a more devoted Muslim so that I will convert my mother to be a Muslim. And he studied and he learned and he was connected with one fundamentalist group of Muslim in Indonesia. Uh, this fundamentalist group, if you remember the, what is happening in the history back in the year 2000 or 2002, when the bomb blast in, in Bali, yeah, it was this group of people where this young man joined. And they, they, their target is to change Indonesia, Democrat, uh, Republic of Indonesia into the Muslim country. And one day after his second year in his uh, college, he went home. He studied in Jakarta, in the capital city, but his mother was in Medan, in North Sumatra, on the western part of Indonesia. He told his mother, if he tried to convince his mother, but his mother never, he, her, her faith in Jesus never, never moved. And then at last he said to his mother, Mom, if our group, if this fundamentalist group conquer Indonesia to be a Muslim country, we will make a war. And Christian lives, even you, my mothers, your blood are halal for me, is halal for me. Means he can kill his mother if they are not in the same faith. That's that what they believe. And after he was there, second year, one of our brothers met him. The mother asked one of his friends, tried to teach him, tried to help him understand about Jesus. Brother Hotmatua, the name of this, this man, tried to approach Daniel, Daniel, the name of that young man, and open the Quran. He did not start it with the Bible, but Quran. This is a fundamentalist a Muslim, so started with several verses from Quran, started about the, the holiness, the, that Jesus is the holy person, not only a, a prophet, but he's a holy person, and started with Jesus, uh, the, the divinity of Jesus, and from the Quran. And soon, after three years, they study, three regular study. His younger brother joined him also to study about the Bible doctrines from the Quran. And then the younger brother is the one who accepts first and baptized. And soon after a year, he and the younger brother of Daniel, which named Yusuf, started to teach, to convince the Daniel. And after another year, 
he also accepted and baptized as an Adventist. Four years, Bible study started with <laughs> Quran, started with what they, are, they, they knew about the beliefs. There are many. So they started to dig deeper until he was baptized. He finished his bachelor in, theol in, in psychology, actually, from the public university. And after he graduated, he was baptized to be an Adventist. And he continued study in our seminary theological school and finished his master in, in ministry. And later, he was joined to the ministry and he was called by Jakarta Local Conference now as an evangelist, as a young pastor, specially target this, this group of believers. And they started to establish a companies. They named it MBBC, Muslim Background Believers Church. <laughs> so they started with their custom when they enter the, they are renting the house, uh, the, the meeting place. They started to, the conference started to purchase one place for them. And they enter their worship place. They took off their shoes or their sandals like they entering the mosque. The way they pray, not like us. In some places, they do not use benches. They sit on the floor. They pray with the same way. They pray. Their hands, they will not hold their hands. They open their hands, but they pray to the Lord. And they read the Bible. They study the Bible. This is one of the interesting things. We need more laborers to work in our territory to reach more than 700 million this people group. And I believe with this short story I share to you, it will trigger our, our faith. You already involved helping our divisions and hopefully next year or next time there will be more mission trip to our territory. You may choose. You want to send your young people. I, I'm glad there are many young people here participate in our worship. You may send them. You just tell us Pastor Ian was elected as the mission uh, refocus coordinator to deal with these activities, sending missionaries or receiving missionaries. You may choose, oh, we want to send our youth to be exposed to the Buddhist community. That was Thailand. And if you want to send them to be exposed to, 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 to associate with these uh, brothers, Muslim communities, we have several places. And you can see how good God is in our uh, ministries to him. This is the introductions only, but we are not stop here. I would bring our mind for a few minutes about a message from the Lord for us this morning. Yeah. Uh, if you have your Bible, or you can just read this one, the paragraph from Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. But this is the key text for us. When he had stopped speaking, Jesus means, he said, Jesus said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Zero. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. The background story before Jesus told this key text. He was there, started his ministries. He was a young a uh, person started his ministries. He went down to the Galilee. And when he was there, people gathered together. They started to knew him. He was a great teacher. So when he was there on that morning, people started to gather. They started to push him because they want to be closer to him as he spoke to them. And P P Jesus just started to move back as the crowd came closer to him. He moved back until he was reached there, in, close to the water. And he looked around. He saw there are several boats and fishermen tending their nets, returning from their fishing the whole night. So he called to this group of fishermen, friends, can I borrow one of your boats? 
as you know, Peter is the one always react first. And Peter said, okay. And he pushed his boat. Jesus moved to that place. Jesus board the boat. And he asked Peter to push the board, the boat, just a little on the water. So people cannot come to him anymore, closer anymore, because there was water there. He started to teach them. But the Bible in this paragraph did not told us what are the messages Jesus shared to them. Right after the message, right after he, he, he shared his teachings, he told to Simon, who owned the boat, this Kitex, push this one boat, uh, yeah, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. It was morning already, dawn already. That's why Peter answered, oh, friends, master, maybe if we can paraphrase, you don't know about fishing. You came from Nazareth. You are a carpenter. You don't know about fishing. Going to fish should be nighttime, the best time. The place should be down there in the middle of the sea or, or, or the lake. But, and we have done this. We return home. Nothing. But nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. We know the end of the story. When Peter threw his nets as a seasoned fisherman, when he just, I don't know, maybe some of you are like fishing, when he pulled the nets, he realized that the net was full with fish. And then he loaded his boat full with fish, almost See, the Bible said. He called another boat and they pull, they, they fill those two boats with fish, almost sink. I think all of you are familiar with riding a boat. You know how many centimeters more water to the boat if you already loaded the boat full, almost sink. And after that, Peter, no longer working with his fellow fishermen, to transfer the fish from the net to the boat. But the story told him immediately, he came to Jesus, knelt in front of Jesus and said, Jesus, Lord. The first he told him, Master. But after the occasions, he saw the miracle. He said, Lord, please go away from me. I am a sinner. But Jesus said, no. I will make you a fisher of men. Peter who do not believe first, know that it was not a regular time, the best time for fishing, but nevertheless at your word. So our title this morning for a few minutes, I gave the title, Nevertheless, Generation. God needs his people today. He wants you and me to be a nevertheless Seventh-day Adventist church. Because we are approaching for Christ's soon coming. The time of Jesus to appear on his second coming is already, already at the door. The time is very, very short. There are three short, uh, simple ideas that I would like to share to all of us. Number one, God wants us. God wants his people, his member. He needs a nevertheless generation who believe that Jesus' blood covers my sin. Thank you for your testimony, Clark. Whatever your life's before, if you come to the Lord, His love, His mercy, His grace, His forgiveness are much, much bigger than whatever mistakes that you have made before. So God needs this kind of people. Clark is one of the example, living testimony among us. Maybe some of you have also those kinds of experience in the, in, in the past. But God always loves us. The key text, he already read, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the nets. When Andrews University conducted a survey. We found out 
in the place where they conducted the survey. There are certain small percentage of Seventh-day Adventist members who do not believe that they are saved. They still questioning whether they save or not. Looks like they do not fully understand the principles of biblical principles of salvation. And the most interesting story, uh, interesting facts from that survey, they found out there are several Seventh day Adventist pastors. Few several Adventist pastors also do not confidence that they are safe. They stand on the pulpit. They do Bible study. They convince people. They call people to accept Jesus. But some of them, in the survey, when they ask, are you sure that you are safe? Some of them still <laughs> questioning. Friends, church, God wants us to be part of this group. The nevertheless church members who fully believe that the blood of Jesus are enough, big enough, to save us, to forgive us. Several familiar texts for us. Isaiah 1.18 Come now and let us reason together. Whatever your lives, reason with the Lord and His promise. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Just come. You don't need to pay. Just come, put your trust in Him, accept Him, and He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. Another from Ezekiel 18, Ezekiel 18, 21, 22. But if a wicked man turns from all his sins, which he has committed, keeps all my status, because they believed in him, and does not, and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. So, come to him, he will forgive us. So the assurance of salvation for us actually is simple and easy as Bible said. Ah, one of the famous texts, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but has eternal life. Seventh day Adventists, for some other people, they thought that we, we believe that we, we were saved by following God's commandments. But actually, we are not believed because we follow his commandments. We believe because we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. When we believe him, we are saved. Our sins are forgiven. And in order for us to show others that we believe in him, then that's why we are here to keep his Sabbath holy. We are here to follow his commandments. But salvation because we believe him. And in our lives now, there are still a challenges in our lives. We thank God for our uh, Sabbath school study lessons today, especially. Yeah? Jesus, who are uh, exalted. Yeah? The power of Jesus who was exalted. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. When he returned, he ascended to heaven. He promised, I will give you the Holy Spirit. And we need this power now. Though we have some challenges. In our survey two or three years ago, yeah. among us, the Seventh-day Adventists, those who have personal devotions with the Lord on a daily basis, only 52% out of 100%. 52% have their personal devotions with the Lord. We need to strengthen this one because with our personal relationship with Him, then we will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Not only to conquer the devil, not only to conquer the temptation, but this Holy Spirit also will enable us to serve other people. And another uh, result of the survey for the Seventh-day Adventist family, those who have a morning and evening worship at home, only about 34 to 35%. This result of this survey 
lead our church leaders, world church leaders, come up with the init one new initiative. They call it BTTA, Back to the Altar, to encourage every single family of our Seventh-day Adventist Church. No matter what are your life activities, spend your time in your family worship, morning and evening, so that all of our family members will start their lives connected with Jesus. So the whole day we will live, we will live with Jesus and live among, uh, uh, yeah, live in Jesus and live with Jesus. And at the end of the day, before we went to rest, God wants us also to spend our few minutes family worship together so that with this one, we can be connected to him in a such a way that the Holy Spirit will be given to us. So God wants us to be a generation, the nevertheless generation that fully believe that Jesus' blood covers my sin. Second idea from this short story, second spiritual lesson for each one of us. We need a nevertheless generation who believe and follow the word of God as it has been revealed. The word of God written by a simple servant of the Lord. The fisherman, yes, Apostle Paul was a scholar, but all other prophets, just a simple man. So it is not difficult to understand what God wants us to understand, understood from this Bible. God wants this group, this people, his people who believes and follow what the word of God as it is revealed. Like Apostle Peter, uh, Peter when Jesus asked him to move to the deep sea and throw his nets, though he knows that it is impossible, but he believes what Jesus told him. This is the key text. And I will bring our mind to the story of several prophets, several great people in the Bible. Noah. Noah, we can consider people who believe the word of the Lord as it has been revealed to him, though it is impossible. Though he did not understood what is the word of the Lord. When God told him to build an ark, because I will give poor water, there will be a flood. Noah did not understood about this. I think of Noah. It, nev it, it is never rained before. Nevertheless, he built an ark at thy word. Noah, just a simple uh, example. Abraham, God promised him, you will become a great nation from your son, a miracle son, your only son, according to the Bible in Genesis 22. Though he has another son, according to his plan with Sarah. But God, with, according to God's plan, Isaac is his only son. And through Isaac, God's promise, you will have a big people. You will become a great nation. But the time came when God told him, Abraham, woke up. Take your only begotten son, Isaac, and offer him as a burn offering sacrifice. He knows what does it means. He don't, know, he don't understand how can he have a big uh, descendants, big nations, if he offered Isaac as a sacrifice, burn sacrifice. But Abraham followed God's word. He followed, though he did not, did not understood it. And we know the rest of the story. Oh, Moses. Moses also a people who believe the word of the Lord, though it is impossible. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. The Israelites never walked through the water before. But nevertheless, at thy word, Moses follow. When God told him, use your road, hit the water, it will be divided into two and you will walk on the dry land. He do not understand 
how it might happen. But he followed. Two more example. Joshua. Joshua doesn't understood when God told him, you go around the city of Jericho and on the seventh day, on the seventh time, you ask the, the, the Levites, the, the priests to blow their trumpets and the people shouting as, as hard, as strong as they can and the wall of Jericho will be torn down. He did not understood how these things happen, but he followed and they can conquer Jericho. The last one, Daniel. He did not understand, but it was his practice. He prayed to the Lord three times a day. And when he prayed, he opened his upper room door. Open. We know the story. Though there was a decree that no one can worship, can pray to other gods except to their king, Darius. But Daniel was not changed. He continued with his habit. He did those three days, three times pray a day. Though he knows the consequences, he will be thrown to the lion's den. But because of his faithfulness, whatever God told him to do, he followed. And God sent his angel to shut the mouth of the lions. Church, we live, sometimes we will live in this kind of situations. God wants us to do something. His Bible told us to do something. And maybe we do not understood. We thought that this is not the good way. Not the good way, not the best way. But whatever written in the Bible, God wants us to be a nevertheless generation who follow the word of the Lord as it was written. And he will protect us in our lives. The third ideas I would like to share to us, the third spiritual lessons, God in this remnant church need a nevertheless generation that says, God has called me to be part of a finished work. All of us, he wants us to be involved, direct or indirectly. We already involved indirectly through our tithes and offerings. But sometimes God wants us to be involved in direct ministries, in direct mission, because he wants us to be part of a finished work. Yes, our church started with this uh, idea because there are several pioneers. Despite of the challenges that they have to face when they went as a missionary, nevertheless, they go in whatever consequences. In Matthew 24, 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world and as, witness, as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. For South Pacific Division's territory. Yesterday, we had, uh, yeah, three days, we heard the information. You have 19 countries here under South Pacific Divisions. With these 19 countries, when I asked how much, it, how many is the populations of in these 19 countries, it's more or less 45 million. South Pacific Division serve to 45 million populations with maybe the majority religions I think maybe Christians I suspect it is Christians majority population Christians and then they ask me how much is the populations under South Southern Asia Pacific Division's territory I told them Myanmar the country of Myanmar itself they have 55 million populations even for only one country in our territory, their population is still much bigger than the whole territory of South Pacific divisions. So you can compare the challenges that we have. The challenges. Concerning the financial resources, what I know. It might be wrong, but what I know. Australian Union Conference Australian Union Conference, maybe outside of Northern American divisions, 
Australian Union Conference consider as the most richest financial resources around the world in terms of Union Conference territory. Union Conference territory. You are the, the most blessed conference, Union Conference around the world outside maybe of North American divisions territory. You have strong financial resources. You have also strong human resources. Some workers can be a missionary. Compared to the neighboring divisions, Southern Asia Pacific divisions, we have a huge territory. We have a lot of populations, but we located in, the, in, in our church, they stated in the 1040 windows, 10 degree north of the equator up to 40 degrees windows of the, the globe. We are located in that territory. And Southern Asia Pacific Divisions was the most, uh, the bigger number of the Muslim populations in the world, number one. And second to the largest for the Buddhist community. The next is uh, uh, Buddhist or some other things. So with these challenges, Southern Asia Pacific Divisions are very low in the financial resources. But we have human resources because in our divisions, with this vast territory, we have 15, so sorry, yeah, we have 15 colleges and universities. Sorry, 16 colleges and universities. Out of these 16 colleges and universities, 14 colleges and universities over theology courses. So we have many pastors, many graduated pastors, but with those financial limitations, we cannot absorb all of those pastors graduated from our theology school. So we have resources, human resources enough to send our pastors around our territories, but we have limited uh, financial resources. Many of our pastors, especially in the Philippines, you see, they work as uh, on the contract basis for 10 years. Not a regular employment yet. They finish their Bachelor of Theology. Some of them finish their Masteral degree in Theology. But they still working, serving with their commitment. Serving the Lord only as a contract basis. With a limited stipend. But they do their role as uh, ministers to serve the Lord. So, but we need to work together, collaborate together to accomplish this mission, Matthew 24, 14. This is the last sign for Jesus to come. The other sign of Christ's second coming already fulfilled. But this one, the Lord still waiting for this one. Who will accomplish this one? All of us need to be involved. Just a short story about our pioneers by the name of George Rifle. He was a farmer living in the United States in the middle part of the U.S. When he was convinced to be an Adventist, he thought, he heard the story that in South America, they, they, there is no Adventist yet, and he thought that third angel, these three angels' messages need to be informed to them. So he decided, he, he sold all of his property with his family, they took a boat and went to South America. They landed in Argentina. At that time, in that continent, one Adventist for 35 million. He started his ministries there in 19, sorry, in 1897 and 1894. He started there and now, Oh, the story told us he never returned back to America. He died there as a missionary because of his love to those people. Now, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, they have 1.7 million Adventists. In the city of Sao Paulo, they have 1,200 churches. And in, in Peru, they have 400,000 church members. If George Rifle can live again. He can see the result 
of his sacrifice. He left everything, go to that new place in order to bring three angel messages to them. Second one for our area here or in the, in the Southern Asia Pacific divisions, Abraham Laru. He was a shepherd. He also a wet gather. And when he, was, he became an Adventist, something came to his mind that he wants also to share these three angel messages to Asia. He, he's, he targeting Asia. He sent a, a letter to General Conference. Please send me to Asia as a missionary. And later he received, he received the response from the headquarters. He said, oh, we cannot send you as a missionary with two reasons. Number one, you are too old to be a missionary. <laughs> Second reason, we have no money to send you to be a missionary. But Abraham Laru did not stop. He sell his, his, his farm, he purchased a ticket, he, he, bought a, he, he, he bought a boat going to Asia. He started in Singapore, he arrived in Singapore, he went to Manila, to Bangkok, to Hong Kong, and at last he stopped in Hong Kong. He stayed in Hong Kong, he started to do the missionary there, he, he, he prepared a literature, a Bible study, and share to them. He, he learned uh, Chinese, Mandarin, and he started. To, eight years later, he sent a letter to General Conference. Please send an ordained minister. There are several numbers of people ready to be baptized as a Seventh-day Adventist. He did not stop when the, 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 the church said, we don't have money for you. My friends, it's one of us. I will end with these uh, quotations. <coughs> I'm sorry. From the Conflict and Courage, page 294. Two, <coughs> sorry. It says, every true disciple is born into the kingdom of God as a missionary. Every true disciple. We are part of this remnant church. Those who believe in Jesus and follow him through the baptism, join with his remnant church. We are his disciple. And we are born into this kingdom of God as a missionary. He who drinks of the living water becomes a fountain of life. The receiver becomes a giver. This is the time for us now to participate, to be a missionary from our field, from our place, from our territory. You can involve with this word church initiative, what they call mission refocus. Because based on the survey, this mission refocus initiative initiative launched last October, October 2022, in GC Annual Council. After they surveyed the worldwide church, referred to Matthew 24, 14. In certain places, the work of the Lord are prosper, especially in SPD. In some area like Fiji or what, what country, they said, Almost 80 to 90 percent of the population is already Adventist. The pastors they do not know where to do evangelism. Whom we are going to evangelize? All already Adventists. Yes, in this territory, all already evangelists, evangelize and Adventists. But your neighboring divisions, there are still more. So with this mission refocus, they found out in some places with the strong human resources strong financial resources, they can evangelize their territory. But in some other territories of the world, especially one of the territory is the SSD with these 1040 windows. They, are, they have limited resources, financial resources, or they also limited in human resources. That's why the gospel not moving in that territory. Even in our territory, Southern Asia Pacific Division, it is very slow because of these two issues besides some uh, restrictions with some uh, government in that area. In our territory, the restrictions that we have in Malaysia, Brunei Darussalam, this Muslim country, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. Because this country, considered as a Muslim country, they apply the Sharia law the Muslim law. You cannot open Bible to somebody in that country openly. 
you're going to just meet somebody and tell about the Bible, you will be in jail. We will be put to jail. But we, what we done? We are, we, we, are, we are evangelizing them. What we are doing started with friendship. Show our good deeds to them. Be a good friend. Once they become our good friends, they see our kindness, how we are good to them, give special attention to them. When they started to ask, why did you come to our house? Several times. Why did you help us? When they started to ask that questions, and then we started to talk to them. You want to know why we are here? You want to know why we love you? And we started by open some verses, some texts. Not from this one, but from their holy Quran. We started to build the bridge. So if you want to send your missionary from this territory, even to those very difficult situations, we have some tips how to build a friendship with them. We have many of them started to become God's people. Started with the friendship, with the uh, yeah, friendship, and then started with the one that they have with their holy Quran. But the idea that I'd like to end with this one, back to our title, God wants us as a nevertheless generations. Believe that the blood of Jesus already forgive us. The assurance of salvation is already with us. And be a nevertheless generations who believes the word of God as it is written and follow by the power of the Holy Spirit. And be a nevertheless generations with the understanding that we have to be part of the finished word of gospel to on to end the world to every single nations, tongue, and people. May God bless each one of us so that we will remain faithful and be a channel of blessings and salvation to our families, to our neighbors, to our relatives, and to our brothers outside of our territory is my sincere prayer. Shall I invite all of us to stand for the word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, on this very moment, this Holy Sabbath, Lord, with your people in this church, we are so blessed that you give us the opportunity to come to worship you with the praises, prayers, testimony, the word of the Lord, and the message that we just enjoy throughout these worship hours. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we not only understand your message, not only understand your words, but give us power so that we can apply it in our lives so that people around us may see Jesus in our lives, in our lives as a nevertheless generations of your remnant church. May you help us to take decisions, to support, to participate, to finish your work in this territory and in other territory so that you will come soon. We can see you appear in the clouds of heaven because all of us will participate as a missionary of your gospel. Be with this church, Lord. Bless the pastors, the elders, all the local church leaders, and every single family in this church Every single member, young and old, especially our young people who are here, keep them f remain faithful in your church there, Lord. They are the future of this church. If you are not yet come, they will become the leaders of this church. They will become your missionary in their place or abroad. Help them, Lord, to be connected to you better and better for the rest of their lives. Once again, Lord, may you use this church to be your channel of blessings through their lives, through their influence, through their uh, properties, through their treasures, through their means, and especially through their lives. May the lives of every single family and members of this church will glorify your name and people around them may see Jesus in their daily lives and your name be glorified. And through their lives, they will attract more people come to you and accept you as their personal Lord and Savior. As we dismiss from this house of worship, Lord, I, would, I want to pray, may you bless each one of them. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face upon you and give you mercy now and forever. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Thanks for sharing. Give us an insight into the uh, mission around the world. Um, thanks, Clark, for sharing as well. Thanks for our musicians who helped us worship today. Uh, in two weeks' time, we will have a special program starting at 10.30. There'll be a whole orchestra and everything. So this is in two weeks' time. Probably no 8 a.m. service that week, but uh, keep an eye out on the e-news. But if you don't get the e-news, let me know and I'll put you on it. And, uh, yeah, let's go home, get something to eat. <laughs>